Good afternoon. I hope that every one of you have been well fed, as uh, it is only uh, seeming for the reputation of hospitality of our institution. I will speak uh, a few words um, about the market integration uh, as we see it today, but also as we would like to see it evolve uh, in the next couple of years. For over a decade, uh, the European Commission, but also the Eurosystem and uh, together with the market participants, we have been working towards transforming what uh, has up to now been a very fragmented market in the financial area, especially when it comes to infrastructure in Europe and trying to get to a more integrated level. This work is uh, still work in progress, requires still more effort. However, we are so much used to be pessimistic and negative in Europe. Then let me tell you that uh, despite the request for more efforts for integration, one has to admit that the area of market inter infrastructure integration has already achieved a remarkable amount of success if you look at it from a time perspective. Therefore, I will briefly uh, assess where do we stand right now. But then, more interestingly, I also want to share with you uh, how we always look forward and what are, for the moment, within the ECB at least, uh, the areas where we will set our eyes on and where we believe we could still make further progress. And I will, in this respect, mention two topics. The first is securities issuance, and the second is instant payments settlement. In both these areas, digitalization is opening up new opportunities, and therefore also that is a further driver for change. We at the ECB, at least, we stand ready to take action according to our role. So following the launch of T2S in summer 2015 and two further migration waves that we have seen during the last year, the next big event will be next week when the German market is due to migrate to T2S. And I can tell you we are looking at this in a very optimistic way. We anticipate that in a little bit more than one week we will have an increase of up to 90% of the total volume in the euro area expected at that time when all participating central securities depositories will have connected to the platform. This next migration wave will also lead to an increase in the use of links between T2S markets that facilitate cross-border transactions. T2S has significantly contributed to the integration of post-trade processes across all participating markets. This has been achieved by the gradual implementation of the single rulebook that is, uh, standards, rules, procedures in the T2S market. Harmonization measures necessary for ensuring the efficient and safe cross-CSD settlement in T2S are fairly advanced. And monitoring has shown that by the time they migrate to T2S, market communities are close to achieving full compliance with T2S standards. If I say close to achieving full compliance, it also means that we still have some gaps in the compliance area. 
for example, in the area of corporate actions. But these are complex business processes for asset servicing, which involve rules and procedures developed by a range of different actors. The newly established Advisory Group on Market Infrastructure for Securities and Collateral, the so-called AMI SECO, will address these gaps in compliance, among other areas. This advisory group will also look at ways in which the existing methodology could be used as a blueprint for building a methodology to also harmonize collateral management. In addition, the T2S harmonization agenda has identified a number of regulatory and legal barriers to post-trade harmonization that fall under the so-called regulatory agenda. These relate, among other issues, to areas like conflict of law and withholding tax procedures. The work covers also issues such as collateral mobility, cross-border interoperability, for example, collateral messages, uh, workflows, cutoff times, settlement cycles, and so on and so forth. We expect these issues to be tackled during the course of this year. While the regulatory and legal barriers have proved to be thorny issues, I still expect the Commission, as we have heard being part of its uh, Capital Markets Union Action Plan, that it will not be dissuaded to continue to plow forward and to swift implementation. In this respect, uh, let me only mention that uh, I very much welcome the Commission's legislative initiative that has been announced to determine with legal certainty which, which national law should apply to security ownership. And at the ECB we will certainly contribute very eagerly to the ongoing public consultation and uh, with a view to strengthen the legal environment for cross-border settlement services. And I also welcome the other initiative in the area of withholding tax procedures where we have already contributed uh, as Eurosystem in order to allow the Commission to announce that a code of conduct on withholding tax procedures will be published during the course of this year. With T2S, the Eurosystem has created the basis for an efficient and effective settlement mechanism for securities in Europe. At the same time, by adopting the CSD regulation, the Commission has contributed to further harmonization of the CSD's regulatory framework. However, to be able to reap the benefits of these efforts, market participants and corporates need to have full and direct access to the entire EU securities market at a low and at a harmonized cost. A European securities market should therefore also offer the possibility of issuing settling and holding securities in the same way, regardless where the issuer and the investors are located. A fully harmonized system of securities issuance could reduce the transaction cost for capital financing. It could make the European securities market more attractive in a globalized economy, and it would allow an effective redistribution of private risk across the European Union markets. A sound and uniform pan-European securities issuance mechanism would also be conducive to the creation of the Capital Markets Union, obviously. Despite efforts 
to overcome the fragmentation of the securities market by providing a level playing field, there is still too little evidence of competition. The effects of competition have not been felt in terms of an actual geographical widening of services provided by the vast majority of issuers. The goal of having a euro area markets where access is as easy and as efficient as it is to the respective national market has, with a few exceptions, not yet been met. The remaining fragmentation is often the result of legacy or national rules. This fragmentation is an area that calls for action. And therefore, we believe that it may be worth exploring the establishment of a truly European issuance service, at least to start with for the supranational debt instruments. We could even think about the ECB or the Euro system as a whole playing an active role in setting up such an issuance service. After all, we built on T2S. And we could also consider whether and to what extent new technologies such as distributed ledger technology can be used in that process. I will turn now to the second suggestion that is in the retail payments market. And I have to say that despite the introduction of standardized retail payment instruments and harmonized processing of rules, the retail payment market's infrastructure in Europe remains still fragmented. Apart from a few exceptions again, <coughs> most automated clearing houses still primarily focus on their respective national markets. The availability of a safe and efficient market infrastructure that can guarantee the processing of instant payments across Europe is, in my opinion, also a prerequisite for a success of the decided launch of pan-European instant payment solutions. Payment service providers should have the choice either to clear their instant payment through the ACHs or to use a settlement service for instant payments. Earlier in January, the ECB has launched a market consultation on user requirements as well as the expected volumes for a settlement service for instant payments in central bank money. The proposed target instant payment settlement, short tips, service would offer a series of benefits to the payment service providers. First, it would guarantee pan-European reachability. Second, it would give payment service providers the possibility to use their credit lines stemming from their collateralized positions within Target 2. Third, it would eliminate credit risk, thus leaving the way to faster and efficient settlement. Last but not least, it would give payment service providers, as I have mentioned, the choice. They could either directly connect to TIPS in the future or continue to channel their payment instructions for instant payments through their respective ACH. The Euro system will take a decision on whether to go ahead with such a service in June, let's say at the beginning of summer. TIPS would commence operation if the decision is a positive one as early as beginning of 2018. <coughs> Let me conclude now. With the migration of the German market to T2S next week, the time has come to reap the actual benefits of harmonization in the post-trade area in Europe. But 
This does not mean we can slacken our efforts. There is still a need for further and coordinated action in the harmonization of post-trade processes. There are also gaps that remain in the financial market integration process when it comes to securities issuance. And there is a need for action to make a full success of instant payment across Europe, especially in the area of settlement. The ECB, together with market stakeholders, as we have always done it in this respect, has to explore how to best take action in these areas. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr.